so how long has it been since we've met? Wow, good question. It's, I want to say, was that really 2001 or 2002? Somewhere around there. Yeah, so a good 11, 12 years, or I don't know, I, I hate math. You tell me, how long has it been? <laughs> All right, in the last 10, 11 years, yeah. what happened immediately after the documentary? We stopped filming, mm -hmm. and then you were still pretty much on Venice Beach, homeless, drinking. So what happened in the immediate aftermath of filming our documentary together? Not long after that, I got caught up in a hellacious shitstorm where Tina, my ex-wife, uh, see, I got picked up on some warrants, and I had like 15 open containers, and the cops used to know me down there to where they just, come on, Wolf, it's time to clear up your warrants, and I'd be all right. So I'd go spend a week in county jail, and then I'd come back out and be homeless and do the whole thing all over again. So they picked me up, and they said, let's go take care of your warrants, and I'm like, all right. So at that time, we had already lost the apartment. She had an apartment that I used to visit because I really didn't like the cage of the whole, you know, I, I liked the homeless thing. And, so she lost her children through drunken behavior and, you know. Now, my understanding is you weren't married to her the last time that we were filming the documentary, so I didn't even know you got married. So when oh, did you yeah. marry her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we actually got married. We, uh, a guy named Skyhorse. Another Indian showed up down at the boardwalk and uh, we started running around drinking and uh, I kept telling, she had already lost her girls and I kept telling her, you know, I want to marry you. So, you know, again, that illusion that if I'm married, I'll have responsibility in my life and I'll, I'll do, I'll make some correct choices and, and I'll try and, you know, get my thumbs out of my ass and do something with my life. Sorry, how did you have money to do all this? if you were both homeless? There was a guy who knew of my reputation and uh, he had a problem with some people. They had stolen his belongings. He was a trucker. He left his door open in his hotel. They took all his papers, all his wallet, everything. And it was a gang down there and I knew this gang and I, this guy came to me, you know, he says, I hear you're the kind of guy that might be able to help me get these things back. So I said, yeah, I'm going to charge you, though. I said, how much is this stuff worth to you? And he said it was priceless. It was invaluable. It was his passport. It was his documents, all his papers, everything he carried around. That It was his personal belongings, all his credit cards, everything. So I said, $1,000, and I'll get it back for you. He paid me the money. And I went over there and I cracked some heads and I got all of his stuff back. So she was getting a little measly check. I don't know what it was for. I think she was on GR, you know, welfare, general relief. So we had a couple of bucks. We had like, I don't know, probably 1,400 bucks between us. We got a rent a car. We threw Skyhorse in the back seat as the best man, and we drove off to Vegas and did the whole nine yards, the Elvis wedding and everything. <laughs> it was, uh, you know. So she has a mom that's out there, and uh, we visited her mom. We stayed up at the Mandalay Bay, and this guy, Skyhorse, he was a Vietnam vet, and he had suicidal tendencies, and we're up in the bed, partying, already got married and kicking back and we're, we're just laying there thinking about going to do some gambling maybe and at about beer 15 to 18 this guy starts checking out and has you know Vietnam flashbacks so he started going there and we were like dude you know calm down everything's cool we're here in Vegas we're having a good time you're the best man at my wedding and just enjoy yourself he went in the bathroom, slammed the door, and we're on the 31st floor in the Mandalay Bay. 
and the guy's in there for like five minutes. We're sitting on the bed. This guy came running out of the bathroom as fast as he could, straight for the window. And anybody that knows anything about Vegas, those windows are bulletproof. You cannot jump through them because, you know, people lose their life savings and want to jump out a window. So this guy thought he was going to run through the window. We're sitting on the bed, and I watched him go flying by. I'm like, wow, that's interesting. He better stop or something. He hit that window, and it just bounced like a, you know, trampoline. And the guy broke his nose, fell down, and knocked himself out. So I got up and I poured a beer on him. I said, hey, bro, you okay? You know, come on, snap out of it. And he, he got up and he finally snapped out of it. And uh, so, yeah, it was an uh, interesting wedding to say the least. So we stayed at her mom's the next night. And like I said, she was as unpredictable as I was. So she said she was going to go to the store for more beer. And Skyhorse went with her. So I'm sitting there with her mom partying and we're drinking beer. And she's gone. She just never comes back until like seven in the morning. And I'm freaking out thinking the best man ran off with the bride and he's screwing her or something. She'd actually had a change of heart. She tried to go back to the place to annul the wedding. And uh, she said they got lost on the way back. And I don't know. It uh, so. She came back and I blew a fuse and uh, I put Skyhorse up against the wall and got in his face and, and he swore up and down nothing happened and that's what what she did. She just uh, had a change of heart. But anyway, she changed her mind again and decided she wanted to stay married. So we went back to uh, Venice, we stayed out there for about a week. Her mom put us up and said we don't have to spend a penny, and, and so we stayed out there for a while. And we ended up back in Venice, and that's when, not long after that, was uh, when she got attacked.